Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I edit my photos from Forza Horizon 5 in Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom. Before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you for those who watched my video on photo locations as well as photo settings. Thank you so much on the love and support. You guys have been absolutely smashing it and I'm so, so happy to be making Forza Horizon 5 content on this channel. If you want to know how I've got to this stage over here, all I've done is I've gone into Forza Horizon 5, I've taken the photo, I've hidden the UI and I've taken a print screen off the screen and just pasted that image into Photoshop directly. Now, if you're on Xbox, there's another way of doing this. You can always upload your photos, go into Forza Horizon 5's online gallery download your image and then edit the photo from there. As I'm on PC, I just find it much easier to just take the photo, put it into Photoshop and not have any watermarks on them. Now, the first downside of taking screenshots is that if you have any other thing on the screen, it's gonna get captured as well. Now, if you see over here at the bottom, I've got this little icon and that's honestly just my instant replay that is on my graphics card. Now, the best way to get rid of it, honestly, is just by doing that. I'm selecting the image over there. Go to edit. You can go to content aware fill, which is probably the best way to do it. So if I just click on OK, as you can see over there, it's completely gone and it's almost like it was never there in the first place. There's actually multiple ways of removing things from images or even, I guess, hiding it. Um, one of the easiest ways is using Photoshop's content aware tool, which is what we used earlier. Uh, but if you want to brush something in, you can use something like a clone uh, stamp tool. You can read image data from about here or by pressing Alt on anywhere on your screen and you can simply just paint it in. And um, again, multiple ways of doing this. And uh, yeah, uh, if you want me to go over basics on Photoshop and how to use it, then uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to make that video. So once we've done that, I'm pretty happy with how it's looking at the moment. I'm happy with the composition. I'm just going to save these as images and I'm going to import them into my Lightroom. So I've got my item selected over here. I've got my three images. I'm just going to drag them into Lightroom over here and I'm going to add three photos to my Lightroom. Once I've added them in here, I can also then go ahead and edit these on my phone if I wanted to, but I can also edit them on here and they will be edited for me ready on my phone whenever I access them. But this is going to be the first image that we start working on and developing a sort of uh, a filter that we can then paste onto the other images as well. So the first thing that I like to do with any of my images when I get started is to adjust the color temperature if I've got that wrong. So you can adjust that by either going left or right on your white balance. Um, this is usually something you can fix if you've got it wrong within uh, the photo settings whilst taking the image. I always like to go a little bit colder so I can add some more warmth through other filters later on. Saturation is something that I always tend to increase just to give it some more pop. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is the color mixer. This is probably where you could spend a lot of your time. Uh, in this tab over here, you can really manipulate every single color that exists in this image. So let me give you an example. If I click on the red, uh, I can change the hue of the red. So that would affect all of the reds in the image. So I could turn this into a pink car increase the saturation so it's hot pink and then i can play around with the darkness and the lightness of that pink one thing i would always recommend is when you're editing in lightroom never bump anything up by 100 percent unless you really really need to you're gonna do this for every single thing then you're gonna end up with a lot of quality loss uh, and your image is going to start to look very, very poor. Another way of doing this is by using this tool over here. What it does is it actually pinpoints exactly what you want to do here and you can make those adjustments um, live on the screen and you can change that to saturation uh, over here or luminance and you can take it up or down. You could do the same thing with this and you can see that it also affects the sky. Now, this is the second part of what I would uh, I would actually do is to make the sky pop a little bit more. Uh, when in Forza Horizon 5, usually most skies look like this. And uh, the best way to just make it pop is that the color already exists. We just need to darken it a little bit. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing this uh, and I wouldn't go extreme again because then you're just going to be competing with the reds of the car and the blues of the sky. The color of the trees. Now, this is something that you can also change the shift of. I see that there is a big trend in taking this all the way right uh, and then 
kind of giving it that look or sometimes even desaturating it which i'm actually a big fan of i really really love desaturating the background and making the subject pop um and this is something i used to do with a lot of my photos and actually i still do this to a certain extent but i wouldn't go as extreme as going to this level over here you can also go further by lightening or darkening that image and again a lot of these things are just going to be personal preference i'm just here to show you what these tools do and what they actually mean and how i use them to edit my own photos i'm going to change the sky a little bit just so i give it a little bit more of a turquoisey uh, feel to it and increase the saturation over there i'm quite happy with that i feel like the reds have changed the color slightly so i'm just gonna make it pop a little bit more uh the next thing i'm gonna do is actually increase the clarity of the image 10 percent over there so i i the reason why i'm doing that is because it affects the entire image now what you can also do is you can start masking things if i click on the masking tool i can select the subject which is a very new feature actually and Lightroom is really really clever at selecting your subject and you can see over here it's actually selected the car quite well uh, once I've selected this and masked it I can now make adjustments to the car directly without affecting anything else in the background and so now I'm going to increase the clarity even um, higher and start to bring in some more detail in the car rather than the background because that's not really as relevant as the car now we can see that it's looking a lot better it's looking a bit more lively and it genuinely looks a lot crispier than it's and that than it was before so for a just quick comparison this is where we started and this is where we currently are whilst we're still on the mask over here we can also increase the shadows of the car just to add some detail that was lost within the wheels uh it's up to you i wouldn't add too much because if you start to go over there you can start to see that the car is now starting to look a bit unnatural in this environment and it probably just doesn't make any sense for it to be so well lit up. Um, so some of the settings here, I'm going to be playing around the contrast just to give it some more dynamic um, whilst increasing the shadows. Otherwise, the image just looks flat. Then what we can do is create another mask and sometimes this works well, we can give it a try. Uh, in this case, it's worked really well. We can now manipulate the sky. We can change the temperature of the sky to make it a bit more colder or warmer. Um, I'm, I'm going for more of a desaturated look over here for the background. So I'm going to turn the blues away slightly. Um, and I'm also going to take away the texture of the sky. So it's a bit more hazy. I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the image now. So if I actually select the subject again, you can see that it's going to select the car once more but if i right click this and invert the subject selection it's going to select everything but the car and now i've got everything else in the background that i can adjust the clarity of and i can make the background a lot softer um, again i wouldn't go all the way to the left unless you want to go for some really dreamy look um, i tend to make my adjustments quite subtle i don't like to take it too far on any other side um, and right about here looks absolutely perfect. Okay, so now that we're here back in the editing tab, I would make any final kind of tweaks from the base over here. If I needed to increase the exposure slightly, the contrast can be measured over here. The highlights can actually be decreased in here. If you think your photo is way too blown out, you can start to decrease that uh, uh, over here. And I think I'm going to decrease mine whilst increasing the saturation a little bit over here just to balance the image. So now that we're here, I'm actually quite pleased with this image. This is where we started and this is where we've sort of finished. Um, I'm quite pleased with this image. Okay, so once we're here, I'm pretty happy with this. What we can go ahead and do is control C. You're going to copy the edit settings. Uh, you can go to the other image and paste it. And you're going to paste pretty much everything excluding the mask because that is something that was done separately. The mask on this image was, is going to be completely different to the masking on this image. So what I'm going to do over here is go into masking. I'm going to select the subject once again. As you can see, it's actually not selected the subject quite so well. So I'm going to go over here, go to the brush. 
I'm just going to brush this bit in over here that it missed. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to go over to the other image. We're going to look at what sort of adjustments we've done for this image over here. So I can see that we've increased some contrast, the shadows and the clarity. Um, and so essentially we're going to do the same thing over here, but do treat each image as its own thing. I want to do this whole image as an image set and I want them to be quite consistent. Uh, but in every kind of scenario, you want to treat each individual photo as itself because the lighting conditions when I took this photo would be different to the lighting conditions when I took the other photo and vice versa. So now by looking at both of these, these images over here, I'm really, really pleased and really happy with how they turned out. So looking back at this image over here, I can see that there's a lot of road in this portrait. Um, I kind of want to get rid of that, but at the same time, I like the composition of the image. So instead of just getting rid of this, what we can do over here is we can, we can go into the masking tool, uh, open a new mask, uh, select linear gradient and what we can do with that is create a gradient at the bottom um, and essentially just darken this area and to do that I'm just going to decrease the saturation completely I'm also going to decrease the shadows the highlights and the contrast and the exposure I'm going to increase the contrast instead of decreasing it so once we've got there you can see that this is what the original image was and this is what we've got to at the moment I'm really pleased with how it looks and how these photos actually turned out looking back at this image over here the more I stare at it the more I dislike it so I'm just gonna go ahead and select these two as my main photos over here I like the fact that I have a portrait and a landscape by the time you're watching this video these images are going to be on my Twitter so if you want to have a look at them make sure you follow me on my Twitter so to export these images I'm just going to select these two images over here I'm going to right click export two photos and click on export once we get over here, we can make sure that it's a JPEG or a TIFF. That's completely up to you. I usually select it as a JPEG at full size at 100% quality. Um, if you want to include a watermark, this is your opportunity to do that. So this watermark over here isn't something I would normally put on my virtual photography, but more so on my uh, photos for my clients. Uh, you can also go to the text tab and uh, type in whatever you want. So I'm going to put in my channel name over here beef and place then you can readjust where your watermark goes um, I like it over there I'm just gonna then click on done uh, you can go into more op options and then give it a custom name so I'm just gonna give this Ferrari start number is going to be one and then I'm just gonna click on export two photos and I'm, I, could, I could essentially just save it anywhere I would like uh, so I'm going to save it in this folder here because this goes straight to my phone. So once you've exported it, it's going to be over here. And as you can see, I've got my image right here um, and this image right here as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've got to this part in the video, please consider liking and sharing this video on Twitter. I would really, really appreciate that. Now, I don't know how many of you guys edit on Photoshop or Lightroom. Let me know what apps you guys use to edit your photos and uh, I'll try and make a video on that as well. With that being said, if you want to see another Forza Horizon 5 video and you want to see the series that I've been making, click over here. If you'd like to see something else, Click here.